Good evening to you out there and welcome to Panoramic Perspectives, brought to you by Gerber Foods. Now, so uh, thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, we are a very eclectic show, as you know. Our guests uh, don't even look like each other, you know, but we are Panorama Paranormal. I'm trying to say that together with Panoramic Perspectives. Panoramic uh, Perspectives, Panorama Paranormal and Parapsychology. Yes, the parapsychology show. Yeah, a lot of PPs together. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. No. All right. Well, um, my name, for those few of you that don't know, I'm uh, Carl L. Johnson, um, your co host and demonologist tonight. And we have Miss Elise Giamarco Carlson. Mrs. Elise Giamarco Carlson. Well, I said Miss. Miss. I thought you said Miss. It made me feel like a little spring chicken. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, what am I? I don't know. I I'm think an investigator. You are, I'm a, an historian. Um, anything first and foremost, I'd say a historian. Yeah, you're busy at it so. all the time. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, I like to call you a pragmatist, and uh, so well, sometimes um, even to your face. But back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another p word. Yeah. Um, getting back to paranormal things. <laughs> yes, I'm back. The. Uh, What's that quote? The uh, reports of my death were highly okay. exaggerated. Reports of your death were highly exaggerated. Yeah, because at least was under the weather two quickly. weeks ago, and you know. Yeah, I'm usually. I don't know if you feel like running thing. around the building a few times tonight. I don't think you're that. Well, I don't but... run. <laughs> um. <laughs> or were they? Yeah, but but you know we, we do. Uh, I think our mainstay is parapsychology, really, and that's what Elise has been studying. You know, we try to take a very uh, grounded view but you know it's just a more narrow viewpoint of the yeah, whole uh, it's focusing in, in um, general and yeah. it, we're not talking about better or worse in disciplines it's just that uh, paranormal is a very umbrella term and uh, we narrow it down to ESP PK and the survival of consciousness after death we don't really look so much into UFOs or uh, Bigfoot unless they are using ESP and PK then bring it on um, but Again, because I'm an historian, the parapsychological community has been around for at least 140 years, I mean, before it organized anyway. So a lot of it is just looking at the historical reports of these kinds of events, looking at historical reports of experiments conducted, whether they're field investigations, whether they're laboratory experiments, comparing what they came up with, with what we come up with, and seeing if we can figure something out. Right. So what have we been doing lately in the paranormal panoramic world we've been going to some conferences for one thing there's it, of course october into november was the season for paracons so yeah we already September, reported on October. those yeah, as we have been and we had a, a house investigation well, a person investigation i would say more than a house yes actually um, we have a, a few ongoing investigations but one you know person we're dealing with people rather you know, than locations right. yes exactly and it's enthralling um, you know of course hippo we can't say too much about and christmas the is coming hippo yeah. We're not yeah. we can't we can't uh divulge that names are we never talk about concerns except yeah. in a general sense <laughs> so i think that's enough about us because i got nothing yeah oh i've nothing always else. got something to talk oh, about oh i know you, you know. do that's why i'm yeah. kind of just uh and our present clients if you're listening tonight i hope you <laughs> are you know Stick with us. Yeah, let us know who's here. Even if you just say hi in the chat, just say something. Um, yeah, that's what we have it here. And for. then, please, if you have a question or a comment for our, thank you very much, Sarah. Yeah, we'll try to jump in and answer, address your questions or comments. You know, you know, we can't get to them all, of course, but you know. We'll More importantly, them. our guest will answer the questions because that's why we're here. Yes, that's we have a very interesting guest because he's not uh he's not a ghost hunter he's not a paranormalist uh, he's not a parapsychologist he is who he is he's a photographer with unique artistry so without further ado we'd like to welcome frank c grace yeah frank yo you hey, how you doing? hi elise hey carl nice hi, to see you guys thanks for having me it's great to see you uh, i've come across your name well more your photos so many times in the paranormal realm that I said I'd really like to meet this guy someday. Oh yeah, I can't wait to meet you, uh, Elise. Yeah, I mean I'm, I love so Carl. Carl's a I, Carl's yeah. a friend. So yeah, yeah. yeah we go. We have a we have a long and bizarre history. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. it goes back to we met at historic Slater Mill, as a matter of fact. That's right. We had yeah yeah wow. I was, actually that was like ten years ago, Carl. It's that now. Wow. Yeah, because remember yeah. When we were doing the Ghost Stage show, and that yes. goes back to like 2012. 2013 
then we met a couple of years before that. You came, you wanted to do a shoot of Slater Mill exterior and inside. And so that that was for actually the um, the Legend Trips event with uh, right. with Jeff and uh, Tim, Tim sure. and 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 you and, and you, the, the two Johnsons were there, and yeah, it was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually violated some rules to get you in earlier because I knew the stage show, you know, the um, Legend Trip stage show that we had uh, was imperative that you know we get these pictures done in time. Right. So uh, I talked to the curator, and he said, "Well, maybe you know, next month we could probably." schedule something but i got you in anyway cool yeah, yeah. it didn't hurt anything it, it, didn't awesome. away from, it didn't take away from my time or anything on the job yeah but i did, did hear about it but you should have run it by me first you know <laughs> I got you and you got your pictures but it was okay after that no. so go i'm gonna say i wanted to know trig photography Yes. You've explained that to me. Could you uh, tell our audience what it is and why it this is? is well, this is a good one. So I, I am my, my job at work. I'm the, I'm the, I guess the resident geek at work. I'm the, the, <laughs> the, the nerd at work. So whenever they have a issue with math or something like that. Now, mind you, I'm no genius in math. And, but um, so one time we were playing, we we the bunch of us at work got into paintball. So oh, wow. we, you know, they made crazy nicknames for everybody, and it, one was uh, trigonometry for me. Uh, trigger, so I get it. <laughs> just kept the trig, and it's it's I don't know it's kind of weird seeing it's weird seeing my my name on photography. So I just you know I just stuck with that. So, but yeah, oh, I like it. I yeah. Like it. You never would have guessed, you know, it's only if you know, you know. <laughs> right. you know kind of, yeah, people assume it's like a nickname, but no, well, not really. But uh, it, it kind of goes with the whole, um, my background's all science and, and really chemistry and stuff like that. So uh, it kind of goes with the territory. So people yeah. have asked Oops. me, is it, people ask me, is it Greek? You know, Greek. but all uh, right. Yeah. Also, I think it connotes that, you know, you're uh, acerbic, that you, you know, you're a thinker, you know, trig. Another yeah, well, thing. yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh yeah. It's well, kind of a little bit cerebral, I guess, but uh yeah. It's, you know, know, it's all relative. <laughs> you about the shows we did and you know just hanging out and being at the mill all those times. It's it's getting close upon a decade now. I actually I think we did meet about 11 years ago we actually met. I think so. Yeah, that first time at the mill. That's yeah. Right. Yeah, so, I went with my boss actually. Mm -hmm. you, you hung oh, yeah. out with uh, uh, my boss Aaron. Yeah, he was there. You, he, you, you, uh, you, you guys talked each other's ears off. Yeah. Yeah, we started in. Because ironically, dad... yeah, because ironically, we're in a uh, what is it now? A hundred plus year old mill now, a textile mill actually. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I work in textile. So I got a textile chemistry degree and a, a polymer and a color science uh, master's degree. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was really cool to go to uh, to have you, uh, Carl, you know, bring me through Slay the Mill because I know that equipment. I know even the the old equipment and the history. It's it's uh, textiles is kind of what I do during the day. That's why we had so much fun with it because you were looking. I was showing you the rudiments. This is where right, it, right. Yeah, some of those machines are like 1860s. Oh yeah, yeah. And they some of them function. They run. You know. Yeah, they do. Yep. Slay the yep. Mill. 1793 so this was a very right about polymers and dyes they knew their stuff back then with what they had to work with for mixing they didn't know everything that was toxic you know but they made it work right oh I definitely been, you know, i used to elucidate on the the evolution of purple how that came about and in dyes is went through some phases difficult right. to manufacture well why the, the photography you do why don't you just take pictures of nice scenery and Pleasant streams and lakes. Instead, you get into the bowels of these mills and these wow, banks, yeah, crevices. A, you know, I mean, you got some eerie subjects. So you enhance them, of course, but they're they're uh, kind of out of the way. Yeah. So the whole background with my paranormal interest, and and I love now, which which is a little bit uh, a little bit uh, on both sides here. It's yeah. it's I I work in science, uh, but I love paranormal. <laughs> I like anything that, you know, um, can't be explained, but it all goes back to, I, I always blame my dad, which you, you've met my dad, Carl, right? I can see why you blame your dad. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. So he, he used to have the UFO yeah. books around and the ghost books around. And I was a little kid and I'd look at them and it, it was, you know, but I, you know, I, uh, the main one I remember 
as a, I was a teenager at that point was um, Communion, uh, yes. Whitley Strieber's book, and, and that. <laughs> read that, that from front to back. Yeah, and I got that in a box somewhere still. <laughs> so it was so you know I blame him. You know, in search of and all that stuff was on, and uh, but that actually really got me into it. So, but after a while, it was like I started taking photos. I I don't remember thinking you know I'm gonna do you know, weird, haunted stuff, historic stuff. It, I guess it was just a, just something that just developed, I guess, you know, but um, I like to think of it as why, you know, why, okay, why don't you just, you know, take, just take a photo, right, of and not do anything yeah. with it and just show the photo because a lot of people do not like the photos I do. They, I've been, I've been called the, the worst photographer this that you you name it I, i've been there because they think um, you distort the images you enhance them too much or well, because yeah well the, 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 the thing is they the, there are people that are you know purists that like yeah. hey you know you gotta you can't do that it's that's not what it looks like in real life i'm like well i'm not trying to make it what it looks like in real life right. i think what i'm doing is trying to make it when you look at it at least i'm trying to capture what the place feels like when you're there so that's why I, like, yeah. like a visual, you know, like I, that's the best way I can describe it. You know, um, it, it's just to convey the maybe the, a little bit of the backstory and the history of the place and maybe a little spookiness or, or moodiness or even complete beauty. If it's, you know, like a state house or something like that, or, you know, the grandeur of a of a place with a lot of decor or decorations. So it's mm. it's like a. Try to, when you look at it, to think that, okay, this is what it feels like to be there when you look at this type of thing. Kind of like that. Yeah, we're already receiving a question about what, to, you know, type of camera is better. What, you know, well, here it is right here. What is better for photographic evidence, Polaroids or digital? Is there a particular chemical interactions on photo paper that seem to capture paranormal activity better? I can't that's, answer that. Cogently. That's an interesting question. Now, that goes to, because I've been thinking about that a lot, the... Uh, as of now anyway with uh, so i used to shoot film a while ago i never developed my own film or anything but i started off with a film camera in the you know in the late 80s early 90s and stuff so but um it really there's so much involved in oh my goodness is that a picture of a, a ghost a spirit an orb or whatever it really depends on like the camera what is it doing it's capturing light that's all it's doing it's capturing light. If there's light let in, and now it can be visible light to us or invisible light that we can't see, but animals can see, or it all depends on the um, the sensitivity of the medium that you're capturing the light on, whether it's a uh, paper or a Polaroid or a digital sensor. And um, you know, it's interesting. A lot of the digital cameras today, depending on what you get, they have all these kind of filters on them to filter out IR and UV and stuff like that. So a lot of people using regular cameras, it's kind of like, well, it's, you're not seeing, that's why a lot of people love uh, full spectrum because you're kind of getting a little bit of everything, right. condensing it and presenting it in a package that we can actually see, uh, see what we couldn't see along with what we could see. As in dead air, full spectrum. There you go. <laughs> and yeah. if you and, and and if you're really good, you take a panorama. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. That's some more it. Words in there. there. Yeah. So, so it really it really depends on. Uh, I think all media. If you're lucky enough to get something in the right place and right time, because you know the other thing is, well, I didn't see it when I took the picture. Yeah. When right. you really start analyzing it, it's like, well. You know, that shutter speed was one over a hundredth of a second. You should have seen it. Or did it really blink in that fast that you couldn't see it? There's so there's so many explanations and it's just it's mind blowing. Right. Um, but, you know, like uh, you got to keep an open mind. Not everything is paranormal, obviously. Some things are very explainable. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of people with egos that don't want to hear that. You know, right. they too. So you get it, you know, you, you're gentle yeah. with it. What is that? I think that's an orb. No, it's a, I think it's a dust particle or a raindrop or something like that. But um, right. to them, a, a, a normal explanation is an affront that, yeah. you know, you don't believe me. I, right. I believe you might and be something. That's it's just like, not be it. 
Right. So what I'll say is, you know, if somebody does send me a photo, says, what do you think this is? And I'm like, well, you know, did you feel anything when you were there? And it's like, well, yeah, I did. Well, then that, right. that photo means something to you, whether right. it's a reflection of something or something. I wasn't there, you know, um, but um, is it possible? Yeah. Anything in this world is possible. Exactly. And I, I mean, if you want to go to spooky places and take pictures, make them nice pictures. If you happen to catch something. If not, got, right. Here is a right. great example of that. This is one of my favorites. Yeah, oh, so yeah. waiting for you to bring that. Oh. I love that picture. <laughs> so no, I can't wait. I can't remember who did this who covered that. Was it you or was it uh Andy that did that story for the stage show? Oh, it was uh it was and was it Andy? Andy Lake, Andy Lake I think, I think, the one I think it was yeah, Andy Lake. Like, I remember his voice, his resonant voice. Saying that, yeah, oh, yeah. So, so the I could tell you the the story of that photo. Yeah, so please, when please we were taking, that. I was taking photos again for for the stage show, and I had some uh, from the um the Ram Rams Tail uh the the area or anyway uh, you know way across the street, and I'm like, I said to my friend Kevin, we were going on a lot of like little adventures, finding things here and there. I'm like, you know, let's go try to find Haley like, Walker's grave. It's I think it's still there. So did a bunch of research looking up here and there and saw some photos. And, you know, when I, when I, uh, I am like, I think I know where it is. So we kind of went down in that area. I said, you know, I'd like to get a, a lantern because, you know, along with the story is that he patrols wow. where the mill used to be with, with the lantern. The only thing I wish I would have added to this photo at the time, but I didn't have one was a skeleton key. Because he had the key in his hand too, and I was going to drape it on the side of the uh, uh, the stone, but I but I didn't have one. But so we're walking through the woods with this lantern, and it's it's still daylight because we don't want to get lost. <laughs> and I also don't really know if this is on somebody's at the time somebody's private property or not. Mm -hmm. So walking through the woods, and I'm like, oh my goodness, there it is. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, when we get the there, one. right? So when we get there, it was like it. It was um, it was it was like a high because it's like I, I, I was looking for this, you know, yeah. and but it was so disappointing <laughs> when we finally got there in front of it because you can barely read that stone in the daylight, right? Like barely at all read that stone in the daylight. Yeah, and I was like, oh no, I can <laughs> see where it says no. life how short, you know, eternity how long. I'm like, this is not gonna. All right, well, at least we found it. You know, say hello to Mr. Walker and and wait for the sun to go down and and get a shot with this lantern. And as soon as, thanks to the the legend of him walking around the the Ramsdale factory ruins, uh, yeah, I brought the lantern, and that lantern just happened to be the perfect lighting situation to cast the shadow where the carving is in the in the stone, and it just the the stone came to life. It looks like I doctored all those letters i did not it actually right. shows up like that in the right light so what I, you're saying frank is this is ambient this is what you saw at the time that this is actually what i saw at the time yes yep yeah we we were there during the day then when it was nightfall we waited for the night to show you know to come because i wanted the night you know because he walks around at night the, the legend goes and um so yeah this is actually at night not much was done to this photo other than um uh, a sh uh, shorter exposure to to kind of get the flame and the lantern so it wasn't you know overexposed and blown out and stuff like that so get a good balance yeah. the leaves look nice and rich wow yeah I, and that was yeah and, and we did have we um, did have a we were smart enough to bring a small uh fire extinguisher with us just in case the real flame <laughs> I'm like, oh boy but i, I mean it, yeah it looks so much better than a, an electric light would have Right, right, right. It, it has that old like feel to it, you know. Wow. Yeah, it was cool. That, that that's a a great legend, a great story, and again, yeah. a, a textile mill. So I was more than happy to right. to to cover, you know, to cover that. So yeah, right. Is, at least is a cemetery conservator. She has a technique she uses. So. Sometimes I uh, take uh, pictures of gravestones in town, 
Yep. And a lot of times, like you said, the letters are so worn, you're looking at it and then you go to take a picture and it looks flat. And so you got to right. go along with the mirror. And uh, I'd love to take pictures at night, but it's just not practical. So and I don't like putting them on find a grave nighttime pictures because then people get ideas. <laughs> exactly. So the best thing. So I did find I did, did find a way to, to do that. I was taking a photo of a, of a, um, a stone in uh, Little Compton, Rhode Island. <clears throat> huh. And. It was, I see, as I'm going there, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to see if I can fake a night shot with this. And when I mean fake, it's going to make sense that. So I brought, a, I brought a flash. It was during the day. It was bright. It was, you know, sunny out. But it was, it did not look spooky or anything. I wanted to get something kind of moody. And, and you could also get that effect that I did with uh, Walk His Grave, with, you know, read, the, read the, the writing. So I took a flash. And you can do this high-speed sync thing where, if you get a really nice camera, you can set that flash to go off at like one eight thousandth of a second. So it's like a talk about an instant, right? And it lets out this blast of light. It actually overpowers the sun, overpowers the shadows, uh -huh. and suddenly it's nighttime. Uh -huh. Like it really looks like yeah. it's nighttime, except only the stone is lit up, just like that. Um, the oh, Walker wow. grave. I do have a friend with a very very nice camera. He takes uh, nature photos, but yep. uh, I'll have to mention that to him. Yeah, tell him if you ask him if he can use a high speed sync flash on his, and that that that'll do it. You just do that, put it in manual, dial it in, and then suddenly it's nighttime, and it's like, wow, this, you can actually read the stone battle that way. Wow, yeah, that's awesome. Yep. that'd be fun. And he's also he's a natu nature photographer, remarkable. Work. You would have enjoyed the program we had last night at the Historical Society for our monthly meetings. We always have a speaker. We yep. had a woman who has a collection of blankets from a mill in Esmond, Rhode Island. Wow. Mill blankets and the most famous were called bunny blankets. Bunny blankets. Okay. Yeah. How many blankets this woman owns, first of all. I mean, they've got tags on them. This mill closed in 1945. Wow. Yeah. 1903, I think, on the site of an older mill, of course. That's the way it always Reopen, works. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But um, yeah, she had the whole story of, you know, pictures of the people who worked there and stories of how they were made through the years. There were wow. samples. They were made of a combed cotton that it looked, it looked like acrylic blankets. I was confused. I'm like, I thought she was bringing old blankets. Right. They were cotton, yeah. but they looked, they felt like acrylic. Just to feel them. Yeah. You might have touched them and all that. Normally, you might not be interested in attending a, a lecture on blankets. But the story had a sad was... ending because, uh, well, after the during the war, they made blankets for the Navy, yeah. cotton and wool, uh, heavy duty blankets for the Navy. Went back to regular manufacturing. Um, the labor movement was kind of picking up in the area, and they tried to form a union. And the owners said, "Nope," and they shut them. That's out. just it. That's how he counted. That was it. That's how he, he countered their proposal because he knew they were going to push it, and yeah. he just closed down this place. Yeah, that's that. what happened to most textiles in the uh, yeah. in the northeast here. Yeah, he moved down south. I'll uh, tell you, Frank. I never, I never had a bunny blanket myself. I don't know about you. I have not. I, I've had a rabbit's foot when I was a kid from the, you know, the, yeah. the, the convenience store. <laughs> it's disgusting when I think about it now, but I had it back then. <laughs> <as a kid. laughs> no, she like had a them. sample doll too that was so, you know, they had different packages you could buy. They weren't cheap blankets. They were mostly like right. gift quality. Yeah. And the bunny blankets were mostly for a baby gift. It came with a little bunny in a right. book. At that one point, nice. there was a doll, and I was. She's like, that doll's when she said it was seventy years old. I'm like, but is it haunted? <laughs> has it moved for you she's right. like no i'm like ah i don't need it <laughs> i picked up on the doll not not in a psychic way but i was saying is that an f and b collection you know, a patty line the, the patty series that they came out with it was know, a dyke baby or something yeah. like that yeah wow. but interesting they're of course a little haunted looking because they're it was they're creepy so looking real because looking, it was old you know they're it's old in somebody's basement yellow. that's all yeah so speaking of haunted uh, yes, the other day, one of the uh, the lab techs in the place that I work comes in and says, hey, he's relatively new. And he says, hey, I, I uh, somebody told me that you like this kind of stuff. So I figured I'd tell you this story. I'm like, OK, what is it? And he's um, so, you know, the back lab in the back where he works and I, my office used to be there. I said, yeah, he said, uh, you know, this place is haunted, right? They said, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, I've heard the stories and I've. Yeah, a couple of weird things have happened. He says, no, there was a, I was working in the back and there's nobody back in this back room. And I walked out, walked back out to, he was using a machine back, a testing machine back there. And he walked back out to his and he heard a scrape across the floor and he, and he walks back, he goes right back in there. And he's like, who's in here? 
he thought I was in there. He goes, who's it? You know, who's in it? And he looks in a chair, one of those big, heavy chairs from like the 50s, 60s metal mm -hmm. office chairs, slid all the way across the room and it stopped. Wow. Yeah. It's That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Weird stuff. Haunted chair. That's pretty cool. I, I couldn't explain that away. I've twice I've had the experience of being seated in a chair. It was always in a haunted setting that was called into right. Yep. Evaluate. And uh, the chair, not the same chair. These are two different instances separated by a couple of decades. Sitting in a chair and the chair moved all the way back across the room. Both times moved backwards. Wow. The back wall. And it, it happened so rapidly. I hardly had a chance to be startled. And by the time the chair stopped moving, it's like right. nobody was pulling that. No, no, nobody was so see now, now something happened? like that this day look at that <laughs> i should have been uh, yeah that's my work clothes yeah that's my uniform that was uh, the parent paranormal remember that carl uh, we had that paranormal mill yeah right? that, is that the picture you took of me i think it is yeah that's in the uh the wheelhouse yeah yeah that was in the wilkinson mill in the uh yes. water wheel pit. yeah right near the water wheel that yeah, I remember. I remember. I vividly remember that I went to that with my dad. I can't remember the woman's name that was running it at the time. Do you remember her name, Carl? Uh, somebody was running that. That. Uh, or yeah, name, oh, it was, Kissinger at the yes. time. Yes. Yeah. So you yeah. had yeah. her. She was completely moved during that investigation in the mill proper. Right. Uh, wow. She was hugging a child there. She was she kind of broke down in tears. She felt so moved. And then there was the cold spot running all around the place that the whole group was chasing. That was a cool, yeah. that was a cool night. Yeah, I remember she she didn't it's normally not that demonstrative, but she broke down in tears, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Ghosty child. Yeah. yeah. Now what we have in that setting is a, a shadow person. You don't see him. He it has shown up in photographs before, but uh Hmm. He was probably there that night. We don't know. Shadow persons are notoriously uh, elusive. In the but shadows, yeah. I, I've seen <laughs> I've seen that thing three times. Wow. Motion, you know, moving around there. And the reason I was showing the flashlight over there is because I was indicating to to guests that's where the uh, that's where the shadow in that ledge that's where the shadow person moves through. It's right. Yep. Yeah, that was a cool night. Yeah, so it was a serious investigation. We we get results there. I didn't see anything down there because my eyes were closed. <laughs> yeah, what happened <laughs> right there? You didn't and see... not because I was afraid. We were setting up for a tour one night that I was helping him with, and he forgot something in the main mail, and he said, "I got to go back. Do you want to come? Do you want to stay?" I'm like, "I'll stay." So I sat back, and nothing's going on. So I closed my eyes, and I'm trying to listen for what's you know, because I'm all by myself in the water wheel pit. I open my eyes, the lights had gone out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that'll show you. Oh. And then they came back on, and I'm like, is this all with that light bulb over there? He's like, no, what? No, and it, wasn't, it wasn't flickering. It was right? You would have and to like press that switch, the toggle. We've been back many times since, and it never did it again. Huh. Yeah. Trying to scan it. Stuff. Good luck yeah. with that. <laughs> yeah. Do we have more Frank photos? I mean, that's was... a lot of Frank photos. Yeah, let's let's start a couple more, and then I want to ask him um, where he's. You want to do another one of your photos? Yes. Oh, oh yes. Oh, that, <laughs> He hit on my favorite. I guess my the pay like Walker one is is my favorite, but second is uh, maybe this one. Yeah, I wish I had a pointer because you could see you are in the middle over there, and in front of the door. You know, not to yep. toot my own horn, but that's part of why I'm here. <laughs> uh, both the photo pay like Walker and H.P. Lovecraft show relatives of mine. Uh, wow! If H.P. Lovecraft's grandfather hadn't been born, and if pay like Walker's grandfather hadn't been born. You and I would not now be having this conversation because wow. closely related. Well, more closely to H.P. Lovecraft. He's more recent. He's my second cousin. So right. Wow, that's him. cool. Yeah. But this is a uh, lad Observ observatory built in 1891. It was a favorite uh, haunt of H.P. Lovecraft's. And that's why we had the convocation uh, celebration of H.P. Lovecraft's literary legacy at the grounds of lad, lad observatory. And uh, of course, you see his visage appearing in the clouds above. That's which, good because it, that's you know I, one of the theories is that if somebody's going to haunt a place, it's going to be a place they, where they wanted to be. Exactly. Right. Hanging out a cold, old, cold cemetery. Yeah. Right. Like, exactly. Yep. Spirit be at his grave. It would be in some place he was happy at. Yeah. Thrill of discovery there. 
from what I learned, that was it. I so wanted to, it was published advertising uh, my uh, service of tribute. And I thank you very much for this, Frank. It got a lot of recognition. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, you're welcome. I still wanted to lie about that and wait for people to say, you know, you know, there's a face in the closet. <laughs> well, 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 my, my gum, who, who is it? <laughs> right. It does look like Lovecraft's picture. You know, right. That good. But then I couldn't use you again. So. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. I, right. I, I credit drink photography. <laughs> Actually, I want, I want to put this one up because this is a little different than all the rest. It's not a building, and I just think it's fantastic. Oh, I want to be, wow. there. I want to be there right now. Yeah, that's such a yeah, – that, that's close to home. That's in my hometown. Really? Yeah, that's the uh, the Asonet Ledge, which is really in – I think this pot's really in Fall River, I think. But that's, that's ah. where I grew up in Fall River, so – Yep. Wow. Yeah, that was for a sunrise uh, thing. Yeah. And it was so cool that day. I went there with uh, my friend uh, Candy and we went there you, five o'clock in the five thirty in the morning. We're walking through <laughs> the, the Freetown State Reservation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just me and her. With our cameras, and we walked up there, and we waited for the sun, and the sun was rising just above, just well, you could see it there, but um, yeah, right above the uh, the forest there, and it just happened to be hazy and yeah. and foggy and fall, and it was like perfect with those spider webs there, and oh yeah, yeah. it brings spider webs, yeah, requisite. Uh, it brings to mind. I, I want to quote. Um, a line from The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. <laughs> I said this makes, was a no, but I know it's not. But uh, you know, the uh, the main character in The Exorcist is you know not the, the possessed girl is actually uh, Damien Karras, the Jesuit priest, and uh, he's losing his faith, and you know, it's, which is a tough position to be in for a priest and counselor. And he's uh, in one story, one part of the story, he's he's watching a sunrise. You know, and he's lamenting his loss of faith. And he says, he's looking at the sunrise and his, uh, the narrator says he had met God there once. You know, he had met God at that sunrise. You know, he, he was so impressed by the sunrise. He had met God. Wow. Wow. That's what this calls to mind for me. Wow. Okay. Wow. See, there you go. And that's it. And this, this, this actually, oh, thanks, Sarah, for the, for the comment. This actually, it actually, that's what it felt like when I was there. It was, you know, you had the, it was, uh, a little bit gloomy because of the the hazy fog the the sun is burning through it though and and you got the beautiful colors and it's that warm the warm tone when the sun's finally rising and yeah it's a it's a nice place I, i've you definitely feel kind of weird in that place and i you know i always say the, the joke i always say is i'm about as uh psychic and tuned in as a as a block of wood <laughs> um so when i feel something i gotta pay attention to it but um yeah this is uh it's a cool place. I love going to the to the ledge and just just the, just the Freetown State Forest in general. It's 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 beautiful. Oh, well, you were fortunate to capture a, the image of a Bigfoot there too. I don't know if you, you, you <laughs> where is he in the background? There? He might be a red circle around it. So. Oh yeah, he's dipping his feet there at the at the. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> you don't always get it's called like photographic noise. You don't always perceive what's in a photograph right away. And you got yourself a Bigfoot. That's a cloud. <laughs> exactly right. Cloud <laughs> that looks like a big foot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see where you get your uh, reputation. <laughs> well, the, first, the first time that uh, Jeff Blanger and I were doing the calendar, yeah. I was uh, going up to the uh, the Union uh, Union Cemetery there in um, Eastern Connecticut, and he and he he's he's texting me. He's like he's making sure I, I had just just got to know him. Then he's like, did you, know, did you get did you get there okay? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah I got here fine. He, and he says, hey, "How's the cemetery?" I'm like, "It's it's it's awesome." He, he says, uh, "You know, if you can get a picture of the lady in white too, that might help us sell a few pounds." <laughs> I'm like, "I'll I'll try." <laughs> what cemetery is that? The There's lady an app in for white. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely an app for that. Yeah. Let's see. Let's let's go to a fan favorite next. <laughs> oh yes. A conjuring house. Conjuring oh yeah! House. Whoa, look at this. He it's brought just that such to a cool house. fire in the cool. sky. You know, yeah. uh, I don't know. It. That's a place that I wanted to photograph even before the movie came out, and it was like, yeah. Um, and you know, and again, Jeff calls me one day. He's going to do the um, New England Legends podcast for yeah. uh, I think right. it was a Halloween special, and he's like, uh, "Dude, we can go. You can go shoot in there." I'm like, "Get out of here." <laughs> yeah yeah we can go shoot you can go shoot in there i'm like you're kidding he's like so it was it was a dream 
did, did you uh did you meet jennifer oh yeah oh yeah. we knew her well yeah know her so, well did you ever see her tattoo oh my god it's fantastic that's my yeah. photo <laughs> all right. All right not this one though the one with the stars in the sky oh, right where yeah. she actually had the the, the house that one the yes. yeah. <laughs> wow yeah so we had a cool experience happen there it was um Ooh. jeff and ray were there and they had they were done interviewing uh, interviewing the the uh, at the time the new owners, uh, now the older owners. Mm -hmm. um, I was in the dining area, and they were in the um, the uh, the seance room, the table where you know right right in front of the well. Uh, there's more than one fireplace, yeah, but right, know right you know the main one across yeah. from the library. Yeah, yeah it shows up in the pictures most often. Exactly. So all of a sudden, we I I hear a noise, and they're at the table, and all they get up and like, what was that? Was that you? I'm like, no, that was that wasn't me. So we go running over to you know to find out what had what where the noise came from. And we went over and the, as you know that the, at the time the guy had like I don't know like twelve cameras set up running. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And sure enough, there was a um, a laptop uh, case in the library room. But it was yeah, that would be a good that that would be a cool puzzle. A good puzzle picture, yeah. So, it was yeah. leaning against the wall, and the case went against gravity. The top of the case went against down and slammed on the ground. Hmm. Yeah, wow. it was cool, and they and they actually caught it on camera. Did yeah. They get yeah. captured because Corey had his DVR surveillance system set up, and uh, so they they caught a lot that people normally would miss because he always had those cameras going. No, well, that must have been weird to go back in there after all these years. Oh yeah. Well, it I it's not like I hadn't been there since 1973, but yeah. I've been there a couple of times in the interim. Um, but it always was a trip to go back, especially if I hadn't been there for some years. Right, you know, right. How it remembered me. It was an eerie but not not unpleasant feeling to go back in that house. And that's where I wish I had you there that day, Frank, because when the day it was like June seventeenth, it was uh, I think it was it was June. 2019 and Corey and Jen Heinzen just had the closing on the house and they invited me over because of my background with the house. And of course I brought a lease and I wandered around a little bit and I said, Oh, that mirror is still on the wall. That, uh, that's the one that uh, the parents had of that mirror up there and the success of two owners kept it up there. So wow. I went over and looked in the mirror. I haven't looked in this mirror in a while. I saw myself as I looked in 1973 is wow. I, I memorized that. I started to call for uh, Corey Heinzen and then Elise. And I said, no, I know as soon as they get in here, it's going to be gone. Right. Right. And I spent the next three to four minutes just gazing at that. Not a trick of the light. I will always know this really happened. This is not hallu hallucination. This is just there. I'm seeing it. How it's happening, I don't know. My well, the the house there. Yeah, the house is basically telling you it. Welcome back, right? That's what I so like to believe, and I do believe that. Yeah, is, is this you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, like, right, yeah. yeah. Wow, <laughs> look what happened to you! <laughs> yeah, right, right. Wow, yeah. wouldn't you like to be this person again? Right, you know and those I mean? are the stories. You, those are the stories that sometimes you have a hard time telling anybody, right? Because it's it's yeah. so extraordinary. Well, that's the, you know the frustrating thing about it. It was a singular experience, like a lot of the. And that's what most of it is, right? It's it all boils to me. It all boils down to mostly a, a, like a personal experience and what you what you get what you get from it, right? Right. And a lot of times it's it it's almost like a lot of times I think um, I'm definitely no expert on this, but a lot of times I, I I believe it's 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 supposed to be a personal experience, and it's it, <clears throat> but there's always a trickster element to it. You know, yeah. that uh it's almost like somebody was playing a joke on me. Right, yeah, or yeah, or it, yeah. it does something so absurd that you're not gonna tell anybody about it, and it's almost like it's messing with you sometimes. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's like, a you cool, will never be this again. And right, that's a cool story, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, but my reflection moved as I did. And, right. You know, I had my modern, you know, clothes on my yeah, shirt yeah. during that day, and it's just that I had kind of shoulder length uh Sandy blonde hair <laughs> and yep, yep. Look, the 70s. Uh, yeah, sideburns. I guess I like to say even the even the ladies yeah. had sideburns back then. It was just, <laughs> you know, and I just it was but there was nothing else in the room in the background or that right. I was doing that indicated that era, the nineteen seventies. It was like this young, young me when I yeah, first no. 
Yeah, no, some people would say, hey, uh, that's ridiculous. That's impossible. And as far as we know, yeah, it is. But we don't know a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, we could sum it up and say it's quantum. That's it. Right? Yeah, quantum. that's the catchphrase now, right? Hey, um, New England uh, Spooky Adventures, how you doing? Hey there, yeah. Hello. So yeah, yeah. it's it's so interesting. What's next on the horizon for you, Frank. I mean, you're just going to be like finding really enthralling subjects and places. You don't usually take people pictures. Yeah, I I I, I want to take more people. I've been looking at that the the photo of especially of of the two of you, the the duo there, and uh, that would yeah. be we. I want to take. I would love to take more dramatic. Uh, portraits um well she always looks fine can you do anything with me i, well, yeah. I can make you look like you know, you know 1972 if you want <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't even I have to that. we don't have to explain it you know right exactly right right yeah you couldn't come to that first investigation could you i was eight <laughs> yeah that's a good good yeah. reason but <laughs> even even some you know cool portraits that again tell a story of i remember you showed me um a book that you were in carl of somebody that was taking portraits of people yeah. that, and that photo captures you me. perfectly and Thank i think you. there was another photo of a of a, um, a ufo researcher and the way that they did it it was perfect it was kind of it it tells the story in one photo and it's perfect for a you know like a promo shot or a you know a, you know right so anything like that but uh I'll yeah that next i see you it's like a Kind of a precursor to what you do, I think. You know. Because, yeah, yeah. I remember you, know, you showed. Right. I remember you had the book. You were showing me. You were showing it to me. I was like, "Why?" And I think they took it at Slater Mill. I think, like in a, near a window or something. Taking it at Slater Mill. I was saying, yeah, we used to dress in character. You know, but we didn't, you know, take on personas, but we dressed. You know, right. Mill workers. And yeah, I like that one straw hat. Yeah. I look so yeah. serious in that. <laughs> you know. So, but yeah. yeah, but I'm looking for. You know, I recently did. Um, uh, Hammond Castle again. They're under new owners. Yes. So uh, wow, yeah. what a what a I've never what a been, place. Yeah. Oh just, my goodness! Yeah, they they they're, they're actually redoing everything and they're getting yeah. the history all together again correctly because I guess it's kind of lapsed. I guess previous yeah, people invented the remote control, right? Exactly right. Yeah, inventor of the remote control, but he also had a uh, a um, a really impressive uh, Faraday cage. Really? In the middle of the Great Hall, and that he used to use, um, that he put a psychic in there because he loved supernatural stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so he he would do that, and um, so he did a lot of research with that too. Other than all his inventing, um, but uh, right. yeah, it's a cool place. Of course, I like any yeah Faraday yeah. cages to like eliminate contamination as much. This as was, I'll, I'll send you guys the photo from one of the books I have of, of, of Hammond. And it, it's, you're going to be like, wow, that that's not just a normal Faraday cage. That, that's a, that's a high tech oh, box. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But I like uh, any um, historic place. Like I said, historic places, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of places do, do will not let you into photo because they, they would rather have people show up or they got, um, they're worried about people knocking stuff over, which is, you know, yeah, totally understandable because some, you know, a lot of people, they don't care and they, you know, so, but, uh, yeah, I'm always looking for, so it's, it's a curse. Cause you know, you, you, yeah. I drive to work and it's like, Oh, I like to take a picture. Oh, wow, that looks cool. Oh, that looks cool. And it's like next thing. In, I, but, do, I do it driving through my own town, being with the historical society. I'm like, I, I just keep needing to look up that house. 308. Okay, I'll right. the next time. 308. I get home. Yep. I feel about it till the next time I'm going to that store, pass by that house and say, I've got to look up that house. Knows, every once in a while, she'll get something. She'll hit a gem, you know, like yep. her research, yeah. you know. What do you got? Wilson Castle? Oh, Wilson Castle. I have I look at it's one of my favorite places. I haven't been there. Obviously. That is that is so pretty. Well, uh, Wilson Castle, yeah, that's uh, that was from that's last year, yeah. I didn't even build something like that. Like, how do you even dream that up to begin <sighs> building it? That's crazy. <laughs> it, I don't know, it, but it, splendor inside equals the exterior. Yeah. So another another place, you know, uh, that's another place that I went to, and I got to talking with uh, is it is it Denise? Is she the owner? I can't remember if it's, I think, is her name Denise? I think it's Denise. I'm pretty sure, yeah, because I got a card. And, yeah, and, and uh, you know, one of the things she's, oh, do you, you know, I, and yeah. I actually gave them some calendars to uh, sell in the store as like, a, you know, to they let us in there. And this is before, we went, I actually went on a photo workshop. 
but um went in there and they were like uh, do you know carl johnson i'm like yes i know carl <laughs> <laughs> can you please happens. tell him right away? Can you please tell him that I said, uh, you know, thank you so much for uh, oh. you had dinner. I think you did. You had done a an event there where they raised money for the castle, and she was yeah. so grateful and thankful. I'm like, yeah, I will definitely let uh, Carl know. Yeah, oh my goodness, those up those up of flaws is so so cool. Yeah, the floors, yeah. Like that. Wow. I, I'm glad they thanked me because what I did that night, well, one of the times I was there, what I, uh, the one she's talking about is uh, I hypnotized three women, not all at once, but uh, I hypnotized three volunteers and brought them to a near death experience they had had and brought them back to that moment. And then they were precariously leaned over the massive stairwell. And uh, it was a bit experimental, but it was successful. Oh my goodness! I think I remember her telling me that story about yep. the yeah. The price yeah. she said she the, didn't say tell them the haunted come back. activity. The para happenings increased dramatically after that, and I didn't bank on that. I didn't know what would happen. I guess everybody. Huh. Yeah, no, she was, she was she was she was internally grateful. Yeah, because she was just please tell Carl. Like, I will I will definitely let him know. Yeah, and of course I'm up at the top of the stairwell. You know, you need not be afraid. Return to that moment. Go back, back. You know, I was like. So it was it was quite the quite the evening. Yeah. Oh, speaking of dramatic portraits. Yes. I don't know if I've ever shown you this, Carl. You ready for this? Uh, <laughs> I'll brace myself. Whoa, look at oh, that. Oh my god. I haven't seen that before. That is so cool. We've got, yeah. <laughs> I'm wow, on a Ouija. The whole crew. Yeah, I'm AB negative. I see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was one of the. Oh, uh, this I, is, I, this I is love the background. Yeah. Of course, that's precious, but oh my word. It's, yeah. it. it's even got a back to it. Oh. That was wow. Yeah, if yeah, I can purchase cool. one, I'll get Someone's one. Scott for the stage show. Yeah, I, I'd love to buy one and, and give it as a birthday present to my brother because mm -hmm. he'll never touch a Ouija board. <laughs> Well, Keith, if you're not going to use it, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take it it's off. A Simpson gift. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Doo, doo, doo. yeah. So, all the places we've been showing here have been like around here and very interesting, but you've been around the world. You've been to a lot of different places. The highlight and the top of my bucket list was Chernobyl. And that was, uh, oh, that yeah. was in 2018. And wow. oh my God, that was uh, a place I will never forget. It was amazing. Just yeah, it was, uh, you know, the the entire, <laughs> what's that? How did you end up doing that? It was just something you wanted to do and you looked into it and made the plan. I have always <laughs> wanted to go there because it's a whole, whole, I think um, yeah, Josh whole, Gates did one of his, desti his Destination yeah. Truths things there. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, I really want to go there and just, because I remember I was 16, 15, 16 when it happened. Yeah. So I was aware of it. I was just started high school and, uh, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll. It's one of those places that I'll, I'll never get to go. I'll never get to go to, but I'll, yeah. I'll dream about it. And one of my friends, uh, who's a photographer, posted, just booked my flight to Chernobyl, and and I, you know, I, I was like, wow, you are, I am insanely jealous. <laughs> and he sent me a message. He's like, dude, come along. Oh, wow. So uh, I'm like, all right. It was, <clears throat> it was actually relatively cheap, and. Wow. So, and I, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to ask my dad. And uh, and I'm thinking he's never going to say yes. He's, yeah. Uh, for, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. When are we going? <laughs> so, yeah, we went. <clears throat> yeah, we went for uh, uh, three. We were there for five days in, in the Ukraine um, and three days in uh, Chernobyl. Wow. And it was you quite the, like there were your you know radiation counters uh, yeah. and things. Yeah, and we know. we had um we had the the uh, the dose meters on. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you had to have those on. And if you went near anything that was um organic, it would it would contain <clears throat> it would contain radiation. Like on the ground, you could step on concrete okay. and cement and everything. But as soon as you saw some moss or something, you could put your meter right to it, and it would go off. It was picking oh. up the 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 contamination from the ground but um so you weren't just wearing paper masks like we did during covid <laughs> uh actually you would you're just wearing regular clothes yeah nothing mm -hmm. special okay it's yeah. not nearly as it's not nearly as hot as you think <laughs> wow so as, as a matter of fact when when we were when we first 
when we were driving there, uh, our oh, guide was uh, handing out the dose meters, and I said, uh, "Hey, uh, can I buy one of those from you? I'd like I'd like to have one." He was like, "Yeah, they're like I think it was like one hundred and eighty dollars." I'm like, "You know, I really want one." He goes, "Why do you want to?" Mm -hmm. I'm like, "Well, yeah, I like science stuff and measuring things yeah. and test equipment." Yeah. And he looks at me and he says, "You're going to take this on the plane, aren't you?" I said, yeah. "Yes." <laughs> he said, "Well, let me tell you to turn down the uh, turn down the alarm and turn down, I think the limit number, the warning number to like a, a. I need you to turn it way up because if you take this on the plane and as soon as you go up on the plane for an international flight, you will be exposed to more radiation. Oh my god! On that international <laughs> flight, than you will." at three days in Chernobyl. And he was absolutely right. Wow. So we got on there and um, my dad's sitting on the side. It's a 12 hour flight. Right. And I got the thing on and it's like going oh, yeah. crazy. Like, um, we're like, dad, look at it. Look at it. Look at this. And he's, he's like, that's higher than it was when we were in Chernobyl. I'm like, yeah. Cause we're up, at, up in the oh, atmosphere. So, but yeah, you, you do take precautions. You, uh, you know, you wear, you, I, we basically all decided we were going to all going to wear junk clothes there and just kind of leave yeah. them there and have them yeah. throw, throw away yeah. for us. And so we could go back home and leave that. But, uh, yeah, you, it, as long as you play it safe, it's totally, totally, it was totally safe. I, I, wow. I doubt it's that safe now, but especially with, you know, with what, what's going on with Russia and everything, but right. it is, uh, it's an amazing place because it's not like anywhere around here because everyone just left. Right. Yeah. So they were told they were coming back. They knew they weren't. The powers that be knew they weren't. Be, they weren't going to be able to go back. But so they but left. Did a cooperation for the evacuating. Right. So wow. and everything was just just as it is. Yeah. Wow. Just just there. I mean, you you, you saw that the nursery, wow. the schools. Wow. Uh, uh, medicine is still there and yeah it, it was amazing yeah that's wow. the experience of a lifetime so glad you got to go there and photograph of course yeah it was very very cool yeah no i'll never forget that that was top of my list my my, my second my second my new my new number my new number one is definitely the um the catacombs in uh in paris that's wow. maybe, maybe maybe someday okay so, uh, that yeah, would be a cool Wow. Yeah, it's the collection, the mounds of skulls, and yeah, I can't imagine draped in their, you know, their clothing of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those creepy tunnely things. I mean, yeah. full of skulls and skeletons, and hey, we're gonna have to start doing something like that. <laughs> we're gonna uh, run out of land. Yeah, you'll so, see. You know? You'll see a, like a bishop, you know, with a mitre, and right? A Catholic, you know, yeah. and yet skeletonized or mummified. Right, home, you know, a staff, and it's like I haven't been there, but the images are so haunting. Yeah, uh, what Sarah saying has any uh, strobe lighting? So the strobe lighting was when I was talking right. about the the lighting up the graves. <clears throat> That's definitely using a using one strobe for that, and it's basically just a a big flash that that kind of you set the power and everything to light it up and and light light the way you want. And, and definitely with the portraits and everything I've been doing lately with. Uh, with Jeff and and stuff, I've been using like off camera flashing and flash and stuff right. like that to kind of get different effects and shades and and stuff. So yeah, I love uh, de definitely getting used to using um, flashes and different strobe effects and everything. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So no exhumations lined up. I mean, the bodies are you know, <laughs> I mean you know, I, I'll come along. I'll I'll be helpful. <laughs> I don't have anything planned yet, Carl. But hey, I'm always looking to do something. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. It's weird. If it's weird, I'll I'll be your guy. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. keep you in mind, Carl. If I anything going on, I'll I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> so of course, customarily, we ask our guests, "What's next on your horizon? What do you got planned?" But I I think you're just going through life and capturing images. And yeah. Luckily. Yeah. Luckily. You. Yeah. I you know luckily got got a full time job. So uh, this this photography thing totally keeps me uh, relatively sane. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, it's always good to have something you love. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's, it's interesting places that you probably wouldn't have gone. I mean, right. why else would you have really gone to Chernobyl? Yeah, well, exactly. Right, right. Um, and that, that, that's what's difficult about the going to the places that are haunted. Because you know, when I went to um, to Penhurst, I, I or uh, Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, I wanted to, 
I would have loved to have done ghost hunting that night, but I was exhausted from running around and uh, taking photos uh, for, the, for the last three days or something like that. I got to take time to actually leave the camera someplace else. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Get in again, like, uh, like, uh, like before with the legend trips and stuff like that. So, yeah. All right. Well, legend trips, oh. a big component of that was the photographs, you know, the, yeah, yeah got people in. It's yeah. yeah, yeah. But every bit as vital was the photo, the photography. You know, that yeah, set up right. yeah. people where the audience was transported there because of your photographs. Right, right, yeah, yeah, cool. So you have calendars for sale for twenty twenty three? They are all out. They are all out oh. already. Wow. Yeah, that's twenty twenty three. That's Wilson Castle, and uh, Carl. I think I think you'll uh, recognize this. Uh, actually, this is from last year. And the reason I got to this particular place indirectly was because of Carl. Oh, I love Hearthside. Hearthside House, yes. Right. That's so I was on this photo um, sharing site called Flickr that I that I put photos on. It's right. just photos. Right. Yeah. And I saw and I followed this guy. Well, wow, this is so well, wow, this is really strange. That I met at the lat at um the observatory at lad that observatory because of you carl uh jim hendrickson hendricks yeah. or something yeah that's jim what i think it, one of those guys if you saw him you would know him Very i know him I, it's been two years since i've seen jim yeah. now if you yeah if you saw him you'd be like you'd you'd be oh yeah you'd, you'd know him yeah. and so he's a, he takes photos and he's always posting photos so i follow him and then all of a sudden he started posting these photos of this this house and i'm like wow that's a gorgeous house what is that house and i'm looking through it and i'm like wait a minute carl's in that photo what's he doing there <laughs> like this so there's going to be a good story to this foot to this place and that's what turned me on to to the hot side house um oh, wow yeah and that's oh, all because of that yeah yeah. Wow. I'll tell you, Elise, Elise was nearly awesome. nearly took a position as a docent there, um, but then she got elected to president of the Johnson Historical Society, so that took up all her time. Yep. So yeah. Otherwise, she'd be positioned. I wanted to work house. my way up to wearing a pretty dress, but <laughs> 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 yeah, it's not pretty dresses here. But uh, oh, that wow. campus has grown so much. Did you get to go in the mill? Down oh the yeah, I got I I got to shoot oh, the goodness. mill in January. <laughs> Oof, uh, cool, <laughs> 2021 and Kathy Kathy's like contacts me she's like I know you love abandoned stuff too do you want to photograph the mill we'll, we're gonna you know you can come she says but I have an idea the place I always said it's frozen in time so if you come Saturday or Sunday this weekend when it's going to be like nine degrees <laughs> Frozen, all right. Hopefully, it'll be frozen, and we'll have because she was dying to get a photo of uh, like ice crystals on the window, right. on the windows of the mill. So we go there, and it was ice cold. Little did I know they actually have a heater inside. By the way, they didn't put the heater on until I was done with the ice photos. Then, they, then we put the heater. Yeah, yeah master. But we went down yeah. underneath the mill. Have you ever been in there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A couple of times. Have you ever been in the basement? Yes. Yep. That whole thing was solid ice. Oh, really? The water wow. underneath, all down the wall of um, where the water would come in yeah. to turn the wheel was completely frozen over. I'd love to wow. see that. But it was, got I got it. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll send you the photos. It, it's it's very yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, I led the first ever ghost hunt there. To really? Wow. A investigation at Moffat Mill. Now, yeah. I first went in there in 2006 when it was being restored by Bob Johnson. And this was nascent this is before you and it still it looks like people just stopped working there because that's right exactly it yeah work so suddenly there and uh when they were first going in there i was part of that to, you know we went on a field trip for slater mill and uh got to observe it there and of course been in there a few times since would like to return mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i was from the town next door north providence and hearth sides in lincoln and i've just Ever since I was little, I guess I'd ride my bike down that way and such. And I'd always thought of Lincoln as like the American Revolution. I'd say okay. Lincoln, and I think American Revolution. Yeah. It's yeah. just just a great historic town that has uh, a lot of stories. Lincoln Woods is right across the street. Right. Uh, if yep. you listen to the story of the house, they talk about how there were still natives living yeah. in there about the time he right. was in the yep. house. 
and uh, there are some nice. Um, it's not as the, yeah. Go and on. The, the rock that's in there where uh, Lovecraft would yep. uh, go Lovecraft's to ledge. You know, where actually there are photographs of, or a photograph of H.P. Lovecraft sitting there in like this. He used to go to get that one particular rock and one particular pond. We oh, found wow. that. Okay. Not yep. very far from there. Huh. We went on a muddy day in, the, like, oh early, in May, uh, late April at that point. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was quite a day because we were like, oh, it's raining. We won't go out there. We had the whole tour group. We just did a talk inside about Lovecraft that day, right? Yeah. And, um, then, uh, hey, it's stopped raining. Let's go. You guys sure? Like, yeah, they're like, oh, people and stuff. I mean, I don't care. I'm up for anything. But and we went the only truth there. is. <laughs> and we went with Brian, uh, Brian Cano. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. There he did that. And oh, yeah, that's Brian right. With the um, history of the paranormal. Yeah, history of the paranormal. It could have been. And by gum, we did this ghost hunt. And then it was interesting. And we had uh, extraneous noises we couldn't, and interior noises we couldn't explain. And then the uh, the vehicle comes to pick us up, the shuttle. And yes. By gum, the engine was gone. I mean, it didn't even tick, tick, tick. It, you know, not even uh, trying to ignite. It just, it was like there was no no battery wow. at all. It just huh. turn. Now, what did Elise, you've got to say there's something. Well, you know how paranormal tourist people can be. And they're like, oh, no, the van is dead. <laughs> It must be paranormal. It must be the alternator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lisa's saying it must be the alternator. Oh, I even, even getting a click. I, I, I even I even dressed it up like that. I said I, I recounted the experience and I said, you know, I said I got in, the engine was just dead. You know, I can't explain it. We, you know, it was totally to everybody's surprise. The driver didn't anticipate that. At least what happened? Uh, I went over to Lisa. Lisa, the engine didn't start. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, time, the timing, the ride, got the van the timing was, was great. Good. Yeah, the timing was good, though. I played that. So up. it all worked. You know what? I just noticed it's nine o'clock. Oh, oh my God. Wow, wow. That went fast. Okay. I, I, mean, I wasn't even looking at the time. So thank oh. you. Man. Thank you, Frank, so much. Um, <clears throat> half of the show is, you know, displaying your artistry, but finding out your background, how you got into this is what I wanted to. Yeah, hey, you know, you ever looking for somebody else? We can talk about uh, theories on it next time. I, you know, I'm not a. There's so much to talk about with this, and we, we, there's so much we don't know, and so much. There's so many good theories out there that uh, there's something, there's something, something is there that we don't, we, we, we're not, we don't know yet, or we're not ready to know yet, or. Uh, And people call me Killjoy for stating the obvious. Well, but I think somebody until gonna... we state the obvious, we might be investigating things that are just normal. True. You know, yeah. so, but... you know, you smell something funny. Hey, man, there's a dead rat in the wall. You know, it's not a demon. Thank so don't you, go Sarah. investigating for a demon until you've determined if there's a dead rat in the Eliminate wall. Eliminate the rats and then you can go for the demon. Yeah, <laughs> You're yeah. just wasting your time. Well, that's, you why, do that first, that's why she's you know? my partner. So. She's so like, she'll look for the, the obvious first, you know, which may not seem which obvious. Which is not popular with people, but. It is. It's no. definitely not popular with pe- it's definitely not pe- popular with people that want to believe no matter what. Right, no matter um, what. You try and, to it, satisfy everybody to some degree, and yeah, like and and out. just because something is, if you you know at least if you find something that's you know that's deemed not you know there's there's a perfectly logical explanation for it, it you can that can happen. Uh, 95 times as an explanation but those like the the five times that you can't explain it what is that you know uh we don't know compare those what else that's what keeps us going that's not just to debunk or you know but to analyze to evaluate to find out to learn right and you know in jeff belanger's uh 30 odd minutes program he prided himself on never repeating a guest but i want to repeat a guest (laughs) I'm more motivated to repeat a guest now. Yeah, so anytime, anytime. anytime. Everybody that's been uh, watching and submitting questions and uh, adding to the conversation, if you enjoyed our conversation here, yeah, like and yeah. follow our show and the whole channel because there are a whole bunch of good Just make shows. Make a statement. Let us know you're different watching. Different lights by different people on this channel. And uh, oh, yeah, we we're will good be back company. with another one in two weeks. Yep, we are every other week. What's today? Cool. First. So, so that'll bring us 15th. to the 15th. We're going to have the next one and then the 29th. All right. That, so, yeah. Yeah. Who will be after Christmas? Oh, my goodness. It's coming faster. Wow. Holiday wow. shows. Yeah. We're going to resist wearing uh, Santa goodness. hats with <laughs> I'm trying not to. Yeah. You look cute in a Santa hat. A little kitschy. Yeah. yeah. I'm a little mature mm-hmm. for that. Well, it was very nice 
it's not a meeting you, Frank. Hopefully, I will meet you soon. Somewhere. We will eventually. <laughs> uh, let's get some more. Even though it's small, we get a lot more places to take pictures of in Rhode Island. <laughs> cool. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, anything comes up, let me know, and I'll, I'll do the same. Um, yeah, thanks for having me, man. This has been awesome. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And thanks uh, to Ken, too, in the background for, for uh, pull, you know, pulling the strings. Thank you for Ken. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Ken. We haven't forgotten <laughs> you. Not for a minute. Thank you.